Welcome back to the Panic Room, guys. I have a surprise for you today. I have a little bit of a co-host. He decided he wanted to be in the video too. So guys, we have a fun one today. I was tagged by David's Book Reviews. If you don't know who he is, go check his channel out and subscribe. And yeah, I'm gonna do the mid-year book freakout tag today. I am so excited. There were some awesome questions in this tag. And before I begin, I do want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, a massive thank you to everyone who has subscribed to me as a newbie. I truly, truly appreciate it. Uh, David said a little thank you in his video, and if you're here because of David, awesome. Welcome to the Panic Room. If you're here because you just found me, awesome. Welcome to the Panic Room. <laughs> so I just wanted to say thank you all. I am so so happy every time i get the little notification that i have a new subscriber or a comment it just ah uh, it brings a smile to my face so thank you guys for that so so much and you know stay tuned i've got so many plans you know when i get into my office in our new house i mean i'm gonna take you guys with me you're gonna get to see it transform and ah so many ideas but we're here for tech so let's get into it so question number one is best book you've read so far in 2021 so I have to say The Push by Ashley Aldrin. That book had everything that I love about horror novels. It had just psychological torture <laughs> for the reader. It had a good character. It had a relatable character. Um, yeah, it just, it, it was a, a lot. And it was a heavy book. I don't think my review of that book is gonna be up yet when I put this video out, but I know my vlog is, so just go back and watch the vlog. You can see how bad the book traumatized me. But yeah, I'm gonna have to say that's the best one so far. So question two, the best sequel you've read so far in 2021. This was a tough one for me because I don't really read sequel or series books very much anymore. Um, I am currently reading a book called Red Hands and it is a series book, but not in the way that like, like your Harry Potter books are series books. I believe at least right now the reason that this book is a series is much like in the vein of if you're familiar with the Harry Bosch novels it has recurring characters but each book can stand on its own. Uh, yeah so I'm pretty sure that would probably be as close to an answer as I can get is Red Hands that I'm currently reading. So question number three. New release you haven't read yet but want to. Check out my Goodreads account and all of my want to reads pretty much answer this question. But I did pull one out. It's actually, according to Amazon, it's coming out tomorrow as of me filming this video. And it is Come With Me by Ronald Malfi. At Malfi? Malfi? I hope I'm saying that right. And it sounds really cool. Really cool. And I cannot wait to get my hands on that. That will probably be the next one that I read. Maybe my first review in the new house from the new office. <laughs> so yeah, I'm really looking forward to Come With Me by Ronald Malfi. I think that would be really a really cool book. Number four, most anticipated release for the second half of the year. Okay, again, check out my Goodreads, my want to read list. I have a ton, a ton, and it was really hard to narrow it down. But I did finally come down to Comfort Me With Apples by Catherine Valente. And I believe I'm saying that right. I think she is the same author that did Gone Girl, which I'm not familiar with. But yeah, Cover Me With Apples sounds really awesome. It has like a whole Stepford Wives kind of feel to it, which I am there for that kind of horror. I love that crap. So yeah, Cover Me With Apples, I think is gonna be my most anticipated release for the second half of the year. All right, number five, biggest disappointment. Uh, I am somewhat disappointed in some books, but usually I can find the silver lining in most of them. And I think that's because I tend to stick to the genre that I like, so it's kind of, hard to disappoint me in that regard you know i think i think the biggest one that i would have to say that disappointed me was not one that i reviewed on this channel for that reason really and it was uh drive your plow over the bones of the dead and her first name is olga her last name i am not going to try to pronounce because i believe it is in an eastern european tongue not russian but maybe uh swedish perhaps. I'm not, I'm not sure. I honestly don't know. And I'm not going to butcher her name trying to say it. So I will just put a little picture right here. Yeah. Drive your plow over the bones of the dead. It was an interesting book, but it wasn't stand out to me, I guess you could say. 
it was uh, kind of predictable in a lot of ways, and it had a very strange conclusion. <laughs> I don't want to ruin it for anyone. I mean, go pick it up. It's a very easy read. It's very, very short, but yeah, I have to say that was probably my biggest disappointment for the year. All right, number six, biggest surprise. Guys, I'm going to sound like a broken record here. The push. <laughs> the push was my biggest surprise. I almost dropped the book <laughs> when I was reading it. I mean, and it's, it, if you read it, you're probably going to think I'm stupid because, because you can kind of see this coming, but not really. <laughs> I, again, I don't want to ruin it. You can watch my review if it's up. Uh, please watch my vlog. I know it's up by the time I post this. But yeah, I'm going to have to say the push so far this year. It was kind of a shock, <laughs> to say the least. All right, number seven, favorite new author, debut or new to you? I'm going to actually answer both of those. Debut is probably Ashley Audrin, who wrote The Push. That was her first novel. And yeah, I think she, I think she kicked ass. I think she was awesome. I really enjoyed her writing style, and I'm just hoping that she has her fingers on a keyboard right now writing another book. <laughs> That's how much I enjoyed her. And new to me is probably Grady Hendrix. You know, I had never really read or dived into any of his stuff. And what I have read and what I've seen, I have really enjoyed. So, uh, number eight, newest fictional crush. I gotta go with David on this one. I don't get crushes on fictional characters. I will say, to expound on this a little bit, that I think that I can admire a character's relationship. And I'll use an example. Richard and Kaylin from my beloved Sword of Truth series. I admire the relationship that they have. I don't have a crush on Richard, but I like the type of man he is to Kaylin, just like I like the type of woman and partner that Kaylin is to Richard. I don't really get crushes, but I do admire people's relationships like that. Uh, number nine, newest favorite character. Oh, this one was so hard. Oh, I don't get crushes, but boy, do I have favorites. <laughs> So, I'm going to have to go with, and my review is not up for this book yet, but it is The Pharmacist from a novel called Night Theater. Uh, like I said, review is coming soon. And yeah, I have to say I really liked her. She had a wholesomeness and a sweetness about her that I aspire to be in my life. And I, just, I loved how she was written. She is the type of person that you want as a friend. She was the type of person that you want there in a crisis. I don't know. I just, I really liked her. She resonated with me. Again, that was a very short book, but she really stood out as a wonderful character. So yeah, The Pharmacist from Night Theater. Number 10, book that made you cry. I was really thinking about this because David mentioned in this video that he doesn't really cry at books and neither do I. Really, like, I think it's situational because if I get upset or cry at something in a book, it is something that upsets me no matter what the format is. Movies, real life, it doesn't matter. Um, I will say that the one thing that jumps out to me is like an animal's death or the torture of an animal. I don't deal well with that. I don't like to read about stuff like that. I will actively avoid it in like TV shows or movies. It's just not something that I like to have in front of me. <laughs> As somebody who adores the horror genre, you know, I can be watching a movie and you can completely splatter the blood and guts of every character that wandered into the creepy forest with the axe wielding maniac a thousand times and I'm okay, but don't touch their dog. You know, but if I had to pick a book that really, really probably got to me on an emotional level was, would have to be probably The Lovely Bones. That was a very powerful novel. And I mean, a pretty powerful movie, really. It was just supremely sad at some points. There's really no other better way to do it. There's no real flowery language that can make that book any more than what it already is. It's just sad. All right, number 11, book that made you happy. Y'all stick with me with this one. I picked Geek Love. I know, hear me out. If you've read the book, you're probably like, what the hell? But hear me out. I had no idea what that book was about going in. To me, a geek was this. Like nerdy, you know, pocket protector glasses. That's what I envision when you say the word geek to me. 
So I had no idea what I was getting into. I knew that it was like carnivalesque and I love that kind of horror. I love anything having to do with like carnivals or freak shows or stuff like that. I usually adore that. This was on the uh, on another level, okay? But as strange and as messed up as that family is in that book, I really loved seeing all of these family members embrace their differences and people learning to accept them for it, you know? And them finding humor in a lot of it. I loved that. I thought it was awesome. And again, it is messed up and I'm not going to even say how they're messed up because you need to go read the book and I don't want to ruin it for you. But I just, I loved seeing the acceptance, I guess. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I, it made me happy. It made me happy. Geek love. That's my answer. <laughs> Number 12. Most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received. I don't buy a whole lot of books. So I'm going to answer this based on like the cover and the most beautiful book that I've gotten from the library so far. And that would be The Drowning Kind. I mean, take a look at this. Look at the water, the flowers. It's, it's gorgeous, right? It's really pretty. There's been a lot of awesome covers. I thought that The Burning Girls was a really cool cover. Yeah, but I think my answer would have to be The Drowning Kind. It was really beautiful, I thought, anyway. All right, number 13, last one. What books do you need to read by the end of the year? All of them. All of them. Again, plug for my Goodreads account. Go check it out. Friend me on there. I want to read all of the books that are on my want to read list. And I don't... I don't say I hold myself to a schedule. I do try to hold myself accountable because I want to do these reviews because I love it so much. But, you know, reading is an enjoyment to me. It is a passion for me. And I, I want to thoroughly dig my teeth into each and every one of them. So, yeah, all the books on my want to read list. <laughs> Guys, that's it. Thank you so much. David, thank you for the tag. Uh, I had a great time doing this. My co-host is asleep. So yeah, guys, again, from the bottom of my little black heart, thank you so, so much for coming to the Panic Room. Each and every one of you mean the world to me. I'm so glad that somebody wants to listen to me scream out into the void. <laughs> so guys, again, thank you so much for coming to this tag video. You know what? I think David tagged a lot of people in that video. So if you're watching this and you want to do it, do it. And please let me know. I want to watch your tag video. I love watching these things. These are awesome. So yeah, comment down below. Let me know. Are you going to do this tag? You know, let me know and I'll come watch. <laughs> Guys, thanks so much for coming to the Panic Room. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.